Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Max Sport My Motivation campaign. With the return of sport just around the corner, it's a pleasure to welcome Ireland and one star rugby star, Conor Murray, as our next guest. So, Conor, it has been an interesting few months, but we are very close to seeing some sort of sport coming back. How have you been? How have you been keeping? Uh, good, thanks. Um, it was a bit of a challenge, like, um, for most people uh, at the start, just to get used to the... The new normal, um, not being able to go in and train. I think the main thing was not being able to go in and have a bit of crack with the lads in the dressing room. That's what I miss most. Obviously, games and the atmospheres are huge, but just your day-to-day -day, um, dealings with, with people uh, was just taken away. So it took a little bit of time to, to get used to that, but quickly got a kind of schedule, got a routine in order. Um, I'd go crazy, and I, I presume a lot of people would without, without a kind of something to get up for in the morning and, and have a bit of a plan so uh, got that going and um we've been doing okay yeah we've been we've been uh we've been happy enough uh, during this routine are you someone that's good to train on your own um yeah yes and no yes in terms of like so i got a bit of gym equipment from um max sport at the start which genuinely helped me out a lot so i have all that in my in my backyard and I have a little um, roof over the top, so um, with the weather um, unpredictable in Ireland, uh, that was pretty helpful. So that kind of thing, and I have the WAP bike there and the exercise bike, so that's fine. But then the fitness running is something I do, I definitely do it, but it's hard to do on your own. It's like you just need someone there. At the start, when we were out training with someone, um, it was great to have someone there to kind of push you, because when you're running on your own, you don't see anyone near you, and it's it's hard to be competitive with yourself like you still do it but there's definitely a little bit more you can give when there's someone trying to trying to beat you so that side of things has been a little bit tough but um been getting through it been getting through it. looking forward to going back and, and racing the lads and, and things like that i'd say so um and what what do you like to do then so if running is the one thing that you're a bit like Ooh, about what's the one thing that you go okay i could do that all day um I like the, the gym sessions we've been doing. So obviously we've been given programs from the, the Monster um, S&C staff and we follow them. So I like getting into the gym. Maybe if you get it done early in the day, that's nice too, but then sometimes I leave it till the evening. Um, so just your strength work and your weights and um, power work. And then in between things like that with the supersets, I'd, we have a little half rugby ball. Uh, I don't know if you've seen them, they're called a shadow ball. So it, you've no, no one to throw it back to you. So it's a ball that will bounce back off the wall properly because it's got a flat half. Um, so in between sets, just getting up and doing a little bit of skill work um, is good. I, I, don't know, I don't know, I just like the, a good, like quick or intense workout where you like you sweat and you, you feel like you've done something. I hate working out when um, you haven't sweated basically and you don't really feel like you've uh, you've done much. So the gym sessions are... Are definitely ones I like. I like to do. Nutrition wise, then, do you find it difficult when you're maybe don't have that accountability that you'd have with the match every week, or going into training every week, or are you pretty good to stick to a very balanced diet? Um, balanced diet, yeah, yeah. I, I would be pretty good with. I love food. <laughs> it's um, it's a bit of a passion of mine, and it's something that this quarantine has kind of allowed me to explore and 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 find out what I like cooking and trying out different foods. So. I think I, we generally eat healthy anyway. Um, so I think overall we've probably eaten a little bit less because, yeah, we do our running. So like a fitness session, you might cover like one and a half kilometers. Whereas if you did a pitch session on a Tuesday or Thursday with your club, you could be five or six kilometers. So you're not burning that as many calories, even though you're doing a lot of training, you're not getting that, that same amount of um, exposure to like the, the calorie burning side of things so um if anything i'm eating less but definitely eating um a lot of like good food and, and, and trying out a few new things so it's been that's probably been my um most exciting side of uh, quarantine is just trying out cooking new new dishes which i i love i like I, it kind of gives me a couple of hours in the kitchen and it's just a nice way to, to switch off like what give us an example someone might try it out um we cooked sea bream last night on, on the barbecue um which was really nice. Um, it was my first time doing like a whole fish, just cooking a whole, a whole fish on, on the grill and um, there wasn't much to it. It was actually a friend of mine gave it to me, so it was gutted and and things already, so I didn't have to do any of that nasty work, which I, I'd be, uh, wouldn't be great at that, that kind of thing. Um, so we had that and we just, Joanna made a side salad and what else did we have? 
that was it really. Oh, we'd stuffed um, stuffed peppers with couscous and chickpeas. So that was one of the more healthy healthy dishes we've had. We've definitely had. Joanna kind of has gotten into a bit of baking, so she does the kind of sweeter type things like, you know, the Mars bar rice crispy squares you get in Avoca. Have you seen them? Yeah. She's done a version a version of them. So, um, we a balance is exactly what um you're saying there. So we've good stuff and a, and a few treats as well. And you got a dog. Throw in like a nice, uh, healthy meals in the evening and the dog at your feet. It sounds pretty idyllic. He's tiny now. Yeah, we got a dog. Um, Kevin is his name. Don't don't know why. It was just, it just <laughs> came look, up. Does he look like Kevin. a Kevin? He does now that we keep calling him it. I don't know. He doesn't recognise his name yet, but he'll, uh, he'll get there eventually. Um, yeah, we got a dog three days ago now. Um, it's a Cavapoo. Um, so that's keeping things interesting. He's He's been great so far. We'd... The first night he didn't make a sound. The second night he was screaming for a while. Um, we're trying to keep him downstairs as much as possible, even though I know I know she's taking him upstairs when, when I'm gone out. Um, and I can just smell him, smell him upstairs already. So I'd be a bit of a clean freak, but um, no, it's great to have a, have a dog and someone running around the place and having a bit of crack with him. Yeah, it's kind of nice to have that distraction, I suppose, as well, when you have a lot of time on your hands, like at the moment. Exactly, yeah. Well, the only regret is we didn't do it earlier at the start of this, but um, for the foreseeable, it looks like we're both going to be at home for for a good while anyway before we before we start travelling and, and things get hectic again. So um, plenty of time to train him. He must. I'm very keen to train him strictly so he he gets those good habits and he doesn't go to the toilet in the house or jump on the couch and things like that. So um, thank God I'm here to oversee that side of things. It sounds like you're going to be starting your coaching career with the with the puppy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got him to we got him to sit the other day, but I think he just did it by mistake. But um, <laughs> like I said, it's a, it's a bit of a distraction anyway. While well, well, you have a bit of time. So just in terms of like mentally, been away from the game for a few months, and not like you know, not like layoff from injury. It's complete away from everything. Like, how do you stay sharp and connected and kind of? Ready to go again then when the time comes. Yeah, I think I think I thought about this a lot. I think you can you can come at it from two ways. Like you can you can say you've been away from it for so long and, and you might be rusty um and it'll take ages to get back to it. Or I've had the the kind of outlook that this is an unbelievable time to refresh yourself. Unbelievable time to like let if you had any niggles, you didn't have that many, but any niggles in your body just to completely flush them out of the out of your system, um, train away. I love like keeping fit anyway, but train away and, and, and stay fresh and, and as fit as you can be. Match fitness will come, um, but everything else is um, you, you can take care of. And then I think the mental side of it is, is the biggest benefit I've, I've found um, just to get away from the game uh, and just kind of reboot yourself or re energize yourself and you know, refocus. Like I've made a whole new kind of list of goals now since I've had time to sit back and. You kind of when you get it when I got a break anyway. I was looking back on what I've done so far in my career and, and what I want and want to do for the for the remainder of it. So um, it's been really beneficial that way. And I know when I get back in day one, I'm going to be really hungry to just to train to get back in with the lads and and look forward to playing games. Now whether it's in a stadium full of thousands of people, um, not likely at the moment, but we will get back to that stage. But even if it's just playing rugby um, for the love of it and for the competitive drive of just playing rugby and trying to be as, as good as you can. Um, I can't wait. And finally, it'll probably, hopefully, add a, a year or two at the end of your career. You know, some players have taken sabbatical, some Southern Hemisphere guys um, over the years, and this is this is pretty much one of them. Um, so I've um, I've enjoyed it, and I think it's it's a positive. It's it's been tough and and things like that, but you you have to um, you have to look at it in a positive light too. It must be good as well that there's kind of big things coming up. You know, we're going to have hopefully some sort of a Six Nations on the horizon at some stage and then a Lions Tour looming as well. So there's plenty to aim for. Yeah, an awful lot to aim for. I've, um, like I said, a whole, not a new list of goals, but just kind of um, on, narrowed it down. And, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> You've potentially mentioned a couple, but yeah. um, they're obvious ones. Like they're, they're obvious goals that every player probably has on his list, but there's little ones that little targets you want to hit whether it's coming back into training and, and we'll obviously get uh, tested fitness wise and strength wise and just being on top of your game and being as, as good as you can be and 
you've heard it loads of times like people want to be the best version of themselves and it's it's probably a cliche but it, it is that for a reason because you can just like this time off you've just got time to focus on on yourself and and what how you can be as best best or, or as best a player as you as you can be so um yeah lo loads on the horizon loads of little goals to take off and obviously obviously the big ones are there for for everyone to take a guess at and see but um yeah a lot, lot, lot of exciting things ahead it really it is actually exciting you know like genuinely exciting i think because we haven't had anything for so long that even like even just reading about what could happen with the Lions tour is is exciting and, and you know the Six Nations and Super Rugby coming up and Australia is going to have rugby as well and you guys will be back out. It's mm. fantastic. Just like if anybody's watching and they you know someday want to emulate you, how do you practice the skills of the game on your own, like away from, from the gym, just like basic rugby? Basic rugby. Um, so at the start when we, we weren't in full lockdown, when you could have a, a training partner, that was <laughs> a lot easier to to practice um you know having someone there to literally basically catch a ball for you and you can practice your passing and your kicking and uh when that got taken away we all had to get a little bit inventive um because keeping your eye in whether it's hurling or football or rugby like it's it's really important and um you know our our backs coach Stephen Larkham um along with um Mike Pittman, the, the skills coach in Munster, and, and, and a few more, George Murray, our video analyst, like uh, set up a few skill challenges for us. Um, we were all given two tennis balls, um, a rugby ball, um, and just keeping the hand-eye coordination, whether it be passing the ball off the wall or the shadow ball and then flicking a tennis ball while you're doing that or in between, while the ball's in the air. Um, and, you know, that kind of kept us motivated as well because they were challenges. So... We all had WhatsApp groups as players, maybe ten in a, ten or eight or ten in a group. Um, so we do a challenge and we'd send a video of ourselves doing the challenge into into the group, which was quite fun. Um, some lads got it, some lads couldn't make sense of the description and ended up doing the opposite type of skill work that we were supposed to do. So um, it was good. It was really good. So tennis, two tennis balls and a rugby ball, um, and loads of different kind of challenges and skill skill um, tasks that we had to do. So it was different, and I think that's really important as well and really beneficial is I got away from the usual routine of, of say, for me, practicing scrum half passing or, or kicking, and you kind of get monotonous at times, and you try and vary it up as much as you can, but essentially you're doing the same thing uh, day in, day out. So just to get away from that and practice a new skill um, ha has been really, really um, enjoyable. And again, it kind of re-energized me to get back and, and get back to my core skill work with, with passing and, and, and kicking and things like that. You've been a pro for quite a while now. What do you do differently maybe that you didn't do at the start of your career when you were kind of just adapting to life as a professional athlete? Um, I think the main thing is no, no, knowing your body and, and understanding it and when you're younger you're so keen to impress and so eager and uh, you just do as much as possible and that, that that pays off definitely and and it can be a really good thing but I think as you get older you, you you know when you know when you've done enough work you know you know what you need to do especially in the in the week of a game like don't flog yourself um completely um Monday to Friday you know, you know just be I, I've learned to be smart about things um and then, but then there's it's just knowing it and, and being true to yourself. You can say, oh, I'm being smart today, I'm not getting up early and I'm not I'm not doing that run, whereas that that can sometimes be a cop out, you know. So you still have to be mentally strict on yourself and say, No, that this isn't you being experienced here, this is this is you wanting to stay in bed, get up and, and do the run or do the do the kicking. So it can be a handy excuse at times. So it's it's trying to to balance that and, and know knowing what's actually right and, and it isn't isn't an excuse. But um Thankfully, I, I think I, I just like getting a bit of, like early and getting exercise done and it kind of sets your mind right for the day anyway. So um, luckily, that's that's part of my job um, at the moment. So kind of it ties in nicely. So it, it works out well. It's an exciting time for Munster as well because you have some new big name players probably walking around mm. Limerick now as we speak. You'd heard that. I uh, saw, I saw um, 
RG Snaven over the hill. He was actually walking behind a little hump outside our training ground a while ago and he just gave a big wave when we were we were running. So yeah, very exciting. Sorry to cut across. <laughs> yeah. I was just saying people are probably looking like eagle eyed, waiting to see if they can spot them because when you read reports that they've arrived, you know, and they're getting accustomed to mm. Limerick, you just picture them just, you know, walking around, walking around the streets, cruising the street, just mm. checking it out. <laughs> I know, yeah. Empty empty cruise the street. Yeah, I was I have I haven't I only met RG from a distance this morning and then uh, when Damien Diolande arrived he went straight into Castroy Park I think he, he had to isolate for two weeks in, in, in there which was really tough on him uh, I, I don't know was his um, was his partner with him at the time or did he do it on his own but it can only be very tough move to a, a new city a new country and have to go straight to a hotel and not meet anyone not be familiar with the area so um uh, but it, when when we get back up and running and have those two guys there, I think they're going to be huge. And and there's a few more guys as well, obviously, um, coming in. But they're the two guys people are talking about at the moment. Um, so obviously, for obvious reasons, what they did in the World Cup was really special. Um, obviously, envious of what they did, but um, you know, incredible, incredible to see see what they did and have two guys like that come to our squad when when we've probably been a squad that have been there or thereabouts and, and just come up short um in, in quite a few semi finals and, and that's part of the the time I've had off is, you know, you focus on what's right in front of you. It's your it's your club, it's your it's your bread and butter and winning something with Monster would be you know, I've been very lucky over the years to to win with Ireland and, and go on a couple of Lions tours, but they're great. Um but genuinely winning something with Monster would um is something that's burning there in me and it's something I really, really want to do. So um I am delighted to see those two lads walking around Limerick. So when you're off, is that what was in your head? Like that, okay, that's one of the things that I really want to do. And I, I suppose when you're a pro, when you're in it, time goes by without you almost realising it. Yeah, it does. Um, and that's another scary thing with this time off. You realise, you feel like time has gone by without you, you realising it. And um, maybe there was a season or a couple of games or a block of games where you didn't really understand how important they were or whatever it was and then it's over so it was just realizing that the chances you get to to play in quarterfinals semifinals finals and win a trophy are are few and far between and when you're younger you're just working 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 so now you realize how hard you have to work to get to those situations whereas before you just you were just going not that you were going along with it but you just realize now that you're older and more experienced you realize how hard it is to actually get into into knockout rugby and, and challenge for trophies. So um, I just want to want to be there, thereabouts, and get into those situations with a potentially a, a really strong monster squad going forward. And and hopefully um, we can gel well and and we can and I think going back as well, going back to play with the squad we already have with a few additions with the coaching staff, um, especially with Steve Larkham coming in. Um, it's really challenging, and it's all. It's all kind of there on a on a platter for us, so the players just need to kind of grasp it and, and take as much knowledge and learnings, whatever you want to call it, off the, off the setup we have and, and see where we go. It sounds like that you have used the layoff very, very uh, well, that you've kind of learned a lot and, and taken an, an awful lot from it. If you just kind of pick one thing that from the last three to four months that you're going to take away and say, right, I learned from this and I benefited hugely and I'm going to use that in the future. What is it? Your biggest learning? Um, biggest learning? I, I think just making the most of each, each day. Um, I hate when people sound cringy and stuff. Like it's just like, <laughs> but I don't want to sound, but just every day in lockdown and stuff, like I had a routine, I had a schedule, like whether it be, running in the morning um doing that as well as i can getting my weights done and skills done doing that as well as i can getting into i got into cycling a little bit got a road bike off my dad and, and started doing a little bit of cycling and um just making the most of um every like even that, and that's your training side and then off off the pitch stuff um whether it's getting into my little office up here and, and trying to organize everything outside of rugby and and just um ma just being really productive i think trying to be as productive as possible with, with each day um, and try and get better. And I know I know you've seen athletes, everything, everyone talk like this is getting better every day, be the best, best version of yourself. But that, 
that really is what I'm what, what I'm trying to do now is um is just see how good I can be for the I don't know see so at 31 now so I don't know how many more years I want to play for a good few years yet but I want to make them probably the best ones yet so um it's just nice to reset refocus and, and see where you go Sounds good, Connor. And I am looking forward to seeing you anyway. You have uh, web whetted my appetite for what's coming down the track in your career and uh, best of luck with it and really appreciate you taking the time. Cheers, Mary. Thanks, Emil.